Welcome to Splinter Cell Blacklist, where a 56-year-old spec ops agent doesn't give a shit about your gravity. If you're unfortunate enough to be out of the loop of a franchise spanning two console generations, here's the gist. Sam Fisher is a special operative enlisted in the task force known as the 4th Echelon, a secret branch of the NSA. These bad mamajamas work in the dark to take out baddies and prevent terrorist attacks so that little Carl can sleep safely at night. America. Fisher is what's known among his peers as a splinter cell, a lone operative performing infiltration, HVT capture, and intel gathering in the shadows, who is backed up by a remote team that feeds him intel and or provides overwatch and more dangerous operations. Otherwise known as just a complete mother badass. What you see is what you get. Most Clancy games are like that. There's not a whole lot to the story. Bad guys want to take over the world, then it's up to us. I'm still a sucker for the military, mumbo jumbo, guns and explosions and computers and sneaking and killing and remote control helicopters and lasers and lasers and lasers. As previously stated, the meat of this game is spent going lone wolf in the shadows of a variety of locales. Sneaking past guards, lasers, guard dogs, remote drones, and all kinds of obstacles our dear Sam is more than ready for. I had real problems with how much action was injected to the franchise after Chaos Theory, which in my opinion remains on the, like, the apex of the series. Back in the day, Sam started in a true stealth sim. Movements and engagements had to be thoroughly mapped out, none of this run and gun, execution mechanic master chief bullshit. But this installment plays much more like the traditional titles that stole my heart in middle school. This is partly due to the new style system. The styles are as follows. Assault, Panther, and Ghost. Assault is pretty straightforward. Go loud, hit hard, duck and cover, screw silence, all that good stuff. Once you've been spotted, every takedown is awarded the least amount of points possible. Because honestly, it takes zero skill to pop your head out and get noticed. It's also a total bitch to get yourself out of a gunfight when you're hunkered down behind a rock taking it in the face. This style is a lot less fun and the point system is sure to reflect that. Panther is my personal favorite, being a style that I've always played anyway. The idea is to remain undetected while you take out everyone in the vicinity. Non-lethal takedowns score you more points, but enemies taken down this way can be awoken by other guards. I love little aspects like this that add to the experience. Panther can be a challenge, but is awarded the medium amount of points. Ghost is the hardest style to pull off, but Christ almighty does it get you those points. As it implies, Ghost means you can't touch or be seen by anyone. Please believe it is harder than it sounds. But seeing the Ghost icon multiplayer at the bottom of the screen is completely worth it. I really want to go back and perfect each job. You're probably sitting there asking yourself, Tyrant, why do I give a chocolate sprinkled shit about points? Well, that's a good question, and the answer is because the more difficult the style performs, the more points awarded, the more cash you score at the end of the mission, the more badass the equipment you can purchase, and that stuff gets pricey. You can always play within these styles in the previous games, but they've never been recognized in a system like this. Attempting to ghost an entire level adds a significant amount of replay value, which almost isn't even necessary. The campaign is quite lengthy not even to mention the co-op missions. Briggs, Charlie, Grimm, and Coben all have a list of missions that can be tackled solo or with a buddy. The only problem is that some missions might not play as well alone and some areas are only accessible with a partner. Co-op missions are incredibly fun and engaging. Communication and teamwork is an absolute must if you're going to get through the op at all. While multiplayer is interesting, it isn't something that's going to keep me tied to the game at all. You play as either a spy or a merc, attacking or defending hack locations. Spies obviously play like Sam, with less firepower and less armor while mercs are slower and less maneuverable. Matches rarely ever play the same. The frustrations of each side are being mowed down over and over with ease as a spy and walking through a plethora of gadget traps as a merc, wondering what in the holy hell is going on and where those little rascal spies are. Multiplayer isn't bad, but it's also not going to change the face of gaming. The final point of gameplay that I thought was worth touching on is the metagame within the mission selection screen. You control a cursor within the interface, selecting campaign or co-op missions, but then you notice a little orange blip on the map. Clicking on this dot also brings up a screen and a short sit rep or various intel gathered on some fictional terrorist scenario. After the briefing is viewed, the page of info disappears and you're left back in the map. After a minute, I realized that within the intel was a clue. The briefing ended with something to the effect of, The last email in his outbox contained the word Mirabelle. Does that mean anything to you? So after scavenging through my brain for any relevant info, I gave up and googled Mirabelle. The third result on the page was for an airport in Montreal. So for kicks, I scrolled the cursor over to Canada and sure enough, another orange blip popped up. The metagame is an intel-based trail 
of breadcrumbs designed to put you in front of Google and make you feel as though you're an operative gathering info for the operation. At the end of the trail is a decision you have to make for which you are awarded points for the correct decision. I found this 100% awesome. My one complaint for this game is that it isn't finished at all. The game showed numerous sizable bugs throughout the campaign, the worst one being this. Tell her it's fourth echelon. Look, I know you think you're special because you sip lattes with the POTUS, but I have a lot of friends on Capitol Hill. This happened every time there was a person on screen in the game. This audio has not been edited at all. President Caldwell, we believe the Site F bunker under Denver Airport is Sadiq's target. We can be there in two hours. What the fuck? What? At first I thought Sam was losing his mind, but it kept up all the way through the end of the game. I honestly know about half of what was said through any cutscene. For making me earn the feeling of badassery, slightly returning to the true stealth roots, an awesome new style system, which is making me want to go back and perfectly ghost campaign and co-op, and freaking only saying half of the dialogue, I can't give Blacklist anything under 9 out of 10. Few games balance challenge and fun so well and leave you convulsing in happiness as you pull off objectives with precision. This has been The Tyrant with Rumble Pack Gaming. As always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friendos. If not, give us some feedback. Let us know why. We'd love to make our stuff better for you guys, get it out to you on a regular basis, and be sure to check out our Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr where we put stuff out every freaking day. Until next time. Stay. Stay. I'm sorry.